These headphones have an adaptability unlike any type of headphone I've tried before because they fit two niches. They fit the person who wants to go out and listen to music and join professional business meetings, and they also fit people who are hardcore gamers. So when you come home from work, you can take them out of your work bag, hold this button down, voila. But not just this, on the underside of my secret lab's desk, I've got these magnetized to it. Watch what happens when I do this. That is one hell of a transformation. And I'm going to tell you my thoughts on these headphones, which are the Edifier G5 BT Cat Ear headphones later on. But I want to take you to a few weeks ago when I first took these out of the box and discovered them for the very first time. For years, I've been using these, the Razer Kraken Kitty Edition headphones, which are a good bit of fun. I've always worn cat ear headphones because it makes me look like an e-girl, and you all know that Stu's Reviews is the hottest e-girl on Twitch or on YouTube. But either way, the thing that's annoyed me the most has been this cable. It's hideously infuriating. It's 2023, why am I using things with cables? Now, Razer do do a wireless version. However, it's pink. And I've got nothing wrong against pink. In fact, I quite like pink shirts, but pink headphones, not necessarily for me. So I found another solution that might just be a bit better. By one of my favorite brands, Edifier. And they're actually incredibly innovative. So innovative that I actually came up with an idea for these headphones myself several years ago, didn't tell anyone, and now Edifier have brought them out, which is bizarre, very strange. I'm starting to wonder whether or not Edifier have got cameras in here. Hmm. Ooh! Okay, didn't expect that. That is a nice carrying case. So we've got like a really kind of textured hard case there. So we've got the headphones here. We've got a matte finish on these, which is quite nice. It's relatively straightforward. Simplistic design, nothing too crazy. There's a couple of, on the outside, you can see a couple of kind of graphics, if you will, and obviously the branding. If you look on the top, there's these very small grooves. Now this is very, very clever indeed. These are the cat ears and they just magnetize onto the top like this and it automatically light up. Look at that! That is such a good idea! It was my idea! Literally my idea! And I have the drawings on my iPad to prove it. What's also good is these are obviously designed for uh, gaming. So you've got an inbuilt microphone here. These are great. And then if I go into a, an important conference call, I don't have to necessarily wear these. I can just pop these off and I'm professional again, or I can put them back on like that. <laughs> oh, didn't quite get that right. There we are. That is so good. I really love the design of this, it's fantastic. But let's have a listen to some music on them to start with. Obviously, they're used for gaming, so we'll get onto that when we go back to the desk. Okay. I would say that the sound is pretty good. It's different to a lot of Edifier headphones that I've tried in the past. Now there's two modes, obviously the gaming mode and the music mode. In music mode, it's kind of got that similar sort of Edifier warmer tone to it. It's quite an even clarity though. I think sometimes Edifier kind of have a little bit more of a preference towards the bass side of things. 
these seem a little bit more level so they are slightly different sounding than a lot of edify headphones that i've tried not in a bad way just in a different way and when you pop it into game mode it seems to be slightly better separation it kind of removes a bit of that warm tone that i like for music and seems to have a bit more of kind of clarity and separation between the different sounds but obviously to try out the gaming mode properly i'm going to need to actually game with it and you see that could be a problem you could lose these if you're not careful because i'm used to the other ones wherever i put them actually being stuck on whereas that I could knock off unboxing and first impressions given i thought i'd spend some more time putting them through their paces so while i do that let's run through some obligatory spec sheet jargon they have 40mm dynamic drivers for the audio featuring Bluetooth 5 and have a runtime of 36 hours with the lights off and 20 hours with the lights on. And they're charged via USB-C. The dual microphones also reject 90% of the ambient noise and that's what you're listening to right now. And they're capable of playing high-res audio through the 3.5mm connection. And now that's out of the way, let's talk about my experience after using them for the past month. Overall, so far, these have been a fantastic wireless replacement to my previous headphones. The magnetic removable ears, I think, are just still such a fantastic design. However, I do have some slight criticisms having used them for quite some time. The first is the one thing I feared initially. I've knocked them off my headphones quite a lot. Now to give them some slack, I probably end up knocking these off more than the average person will, and that's because of my height. Being six foot eight, when walking through doors, I barely make it through standing up straight. But now, even when I duck with these on, these ears occasionally clip the top of the door frame and have been sent absolutely flying. Hey guys, look at my new headphones. Mm. The slight bonus here is that they are made of rubber so will just sort of bounce away and they're very unlikely to damage anything or even be damaged by that drop so if they do get knocked off that's at least a positive of this design and secondly I've learned that you should never ever 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 give these to your children. I thought I'd have some fun with my daughter and let her wear the pink ones. Now the ears end up staying on for about 14 seconds before they get cast into the abyss of lost toys never to be seen again. So after that first hour of searching for these on the pink ones, the pink ears have remained safely on the top shelf to be used only in strict, strict supervision. But other than these two small details, if you want the sort of person who likes going into video calls with members of C-Suite wearing cat ear headphones, I think the ability to quickly remove them from the headset is so much better than having them welded to a headset directly. But more important than this, from a portability standpoint, if you want to chuck them in your bag with them and take them with you, it means that you can simply remove the headphones, fold them up like this, and you're good to go leaving the cat ears at home to make sure that you aren't painting yourself as some sort of target and running the threat of getting wetted by some chap down a dark alleyway for dressing up like Mog. And here's the thing, because these are fully capable of being used as audio headphones when placed into music mode, and the fact that they sound all right, why wouldn't you use these for both music and gaming? Sure, I wouldn't say these are the best headphones that Edifier have ever made, but what they are is some of the most adaptable headphones that I've tested to date. I do think maybe from an audio balance standpoint, these are undeniably optimized for gaming for the most part, with a much crispier sound than a lot of Edifier products. And I think this comes down to what they're calling their H plus tuning. This essentially gives us spatial audio whilst isolating sounds such as footsteps to give you that competitive edge, which although might seem ridiculous, it really does make a big difference in games like Warzone, where hearing someone for the first time is the difference between winning or losing a gunfight. And because these are equipped with Pixart low latency chip, the latency is only 45 milliseconds, which is really good. It's not industry leading, but it can certainly compete, that's for sure. Now, when it comes to gaming, these are fully compatible with PC, but if you're a console gamer and use the PS5, annoyingly, because Sony are absolute fascists, you can't just pair these straight up to the PS5, 
The PS5, of course, doesn't support standard Bluetooth connection for headsets. Instead, you'll need a Bluetooth adapter, or alternatively, you'll need to plug them straight into the controller, which is irritating because you're getting rid of a wire with the razors and exchanging them for another one with the edifier. Which is why in this case, I would recommend these more for PC gaming than for console gaming. So let's talk about the price. Unfortunately, they are more expensive than the Razer Craig and Kitty headphones, sitting around £20 more at £120 currently over on Amazon. Of course, I don't know what price these will be at when you watch this episode. So for all I know, they might be on sale, and if they are, I'll snap these up straight away. But I think £120 is quite high on the pricing there. Don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't think they're worth the price because these certainly do have a hell of a lot of adaptability and adjustability that the Razors just don't have. And the fact that they're wireless is a big one too. But the one big thing that they're missing is the lighting is pretty limited in terms of its customization. Unfortunately, you only have access to a couple of colors and these can only be changed by cycling through on the headset itself. You also only have two modes of lighting, solid or breathing. And I think for me, they lack a little bit of customization here in the color. And I would love to see a companion app with these that could change the color between the full RGB spectrum and then potentially even add further effects. But I guess on the flip side, I've never really bothered changing the razor's color in all of the time that I had them, except from the initial change. So it's not a huge deal. It just means that if you're getting these and hoping the lighting will match a particular branding, you might be a little bit disappointed. One other piece of feedback is that to turn them off, you have to hold the off button for what seems like eight and a half hours just to get them to turn off. Okay, fine. Not that long, but it still feels like a much longer time than it should be to turn these off. So in version two edifier, please make a simple switch on or off or something to make the process quicker. It's just needlessly long. And I guess my final bit of feedback isn't really about the headphones, it's for edifier. Why aren't you guys doing more types of ears and attachments? There's a huge amount of potential here with these headphones to make all sorts of magnetic attachments to replace the existing cat ears. So I would love to see Edifier release a bunch of accessories. Even if it's just so that you can replace the ones that your three-year-old might have eaten when you weren't looking. Because at the moment, it seems like you would have to buy an entire new headset if you wanted to replace the ears, which would be a bit annoying. But putting those things aside, these, I think, are a really great alternative to the Razer Kraken and Cat Ears. And I think it's great to see yet another gaming-focused product from Edifier. And I hope it signals the start of even more gaming audio accessories in the coming months with even more great innovations just like the g5 bt magnetic cat ears which i think are incredible what do you think of cat ear headphones am i insane or have i ever been sane let me know in the comments below i'll be sticking around for the next hour or so answering all of your comments so drop down there and say hi and if you enjoyed today's episode and like edifier kit why not check out our review of some of my favorite in-ear noise cancelling headphones the neobuds pro 2 where we took them to a waterfall to test how good the noise cancellation was but other than that guys make sure you hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe and i'll see you back for another episode of Stu's reviews soon